It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you're designing a relational data repository on Google Cloud to grow as needed. The data will be transactionally consistent and added from any location in the world. You want to monitor and adjust node count for input traffic, which can spike unpredictably. What should you do? So the requirements are fairly straightforward, but let's study that a little more. The data repository has to be relational, which means that whichever storage product we use should be an RDBMS. Okay? It should be a relational database management system. The data should be transactionally consistent, which means that we should be using an OLTP, right? a database that supports transactions. The data is intended to be added from any location in the world, which means that the database chosen should be horizontally scalable with global replication. Finally, we have to be able to monitor and adjust the node count depending on the input traffic. So there should be a way to monitor the resources. And if the traffic is increasing quite a bit, we should be able to increase the nodes. And if the traffic is reduced, then we should be able to decrease them. With those requirements understood, let's look at the options. Now these options have sets or groups of uh, options within it. So the first thing is on storage. Do we want to use Cloud Spanner or do we want to use Cloud Pigtail? The second part of it is whether we should be monitoring storage and increasing the node count based on it or whether we should be monitoring CPU utilization and then increasing the node count based on how that progresses. So if we figure out that we can eliminate one of these, it becomes easy for us. Let's first look at the storage options. Should we be using Cloud Spanner or Cloud Bigtable for this? For that, let's look at the flowchart. The two options we are considering is Cloud Spanner and Cloud Big Table. As you can see, Cloud Spanner comes under the structured and SQL, whereas Cloud Big Table comes under semi-structured and NoSQL. The first part of the requirement says it should be a relational data repository. Therefore, the only one that suits is this group here. And therefore, it's clear that Cloud Spanner is the right option among these choices. But let's use this opportunity to learn a little more about the kind of choices or requirements where Cloud Spanner would be useful. The second part of the requirement says it should be transactionally consistent. So when you say transactionally consistent, we're typically thinking of a OLTP. Now, though some of the other choices are also transactionally consistent, these are the two options that should be a primary choice for uh, databases that should be transactionally consistent, right? either Cloud SQL or Cloud Spanner. The next requirement is that the data should be accessible from any location in the world. Between Cloud SQL and Cloud Spanner, Cloud Spanner is the one that scales globally. Cloud SQL does not. Therefore, clearly, all options considered, all the requirements considered, Cloud Spanner is the right choice for the storage technology. With that, we can eliminate options C and D and retain only options A and B. The next part then would be to choose between monitoring the storage that is used and increase node count based on that or monitoring the CPU utilization and increase the node count based on that. Between monitoring storage and CPU utilization, we need to understand a little more about how Cloud Spanner uh, is created, an instance or a cluster of Cloud Spanner is created to see which of these would be the better option. Looking at the documentation, it says clearly that 
Unlike other databases, you do not provision storage for Cloud Spanner. So you are built based on the storage that you use, but the storage is automatically allocated for you. Therefore, storage is not something that you monitor and that you need to change. Right? So we could monitor for pricing. We can say how much data is it, uh, how much data is being stored or how much data is being backed up and that will have an implication on cost. But you do not adjust nodes to increase the amount of storage for cloud span. Now, what about utilization measurement for the CPU? What do you charge for on cloud span? You are charged based on the number of uh, nodes in your instance. You are also charged based on the storage that you have either in use or as backup and the amount of network bandwidth that you use. Now for the number of instances or nodes that you use in your instance, you are essentially charged for the maximum number of nodes that exist during a period of now. So the number of nodes that are provisioned has a direct cost impact. Hence we should be monitoring that and adjusting the node count such that we can meet demand and just meet demand, right? We don't need to over provision a lot of nodes because that is extra cost. And we don't, can't under provision them because then it will cut off throughput or reduce throughput. So the right option in this case would be to monitor CPU utilization and based on that we increase or decrease the node count uh, based on how much is being utilized. Combining both of them, the correct solution for this requirement would be to use a combination of cloud spanner for storage and then we monitor the CPU utilization and increase the node count based on the utilization. Now it's time to subscribe to all the great content we've got lined up for you to learn Google Cloud and to help you with the certifications. Mm -hmm.